Hello, my name is David Mahalik. I'm an engineer here at Fort Defiance Industries. Today in this video, we're talking about the P2131 sterilizer, and we're going to talk about the process flow diagram. Kind of just some big picture overview of it. All the little details, it will help you kind of visualize the sterilizer and will help you troubleshoot. If something's going wrong, you can reference the <clears throat> process flow diagram. It's at the back of the technical manual it'll help you troubleshoot. So, if we zoom in here, just a big picture overview. Up here on the top is the sterilizer main unit. So anything in this dash line on the top is the sterilizer main unit. What's crossing the line are the three hoses that connect the sterilizer main unit to the water recovery system. So on the bottom, anything in this dash line is the water recovery system. So right here we have the blue hose that connects the two together. We have the white hose that connects the two together. And we have the red hose that connects the two together. So you'll notice that a few of the components are highlighted green. We have a little note here that says, green color indicates areas that experience vacuum. So since it's very important for this sterilizer to maintain vacuum and hold vacuum since it's a pre-vac sterilizer, we went ahead and highlighted any part that experiences vacuum. What this will do is it'll help you troubleshoot if you're not passing vacuum leak tests. So you can go to this process flow diagram and you can read all the components that experience vacuum. So if we start here on the left, we can see the chamber vent valve experiences vacuum. So that's that manual vent valve on the back. So you know you would know, oh, I've got to make sure that's closed, make sure all the fittings are tight. So you can see it's connected to the chamber. Up here, you can see that the sterilized valve, which is connected to the jacket boiler, when, it's, when it opens, it connects to the chamber. So if that valve was not operating correctly and it was allowing steam to leak from the jacket into the chamber, you may not pass vacuum leak tests. Over here on the right, you can see that the chamber pressure sensor and the chamber pressure gauge are connected to the chamber too. So if one of those fittings was leaking, maybe that copper gasket for the chamber pressure sensor was damaged, then you could allow a leak and allow air into the chamber and you would not pass vacuum leak test. Also over here, I have my vacuum brake valves. So if <clears throat> the vacuum brake valve, the one closest to the HEPA filter, is leaking, it could allow air into the chamber and I wouldn't pass vacuum leaks. Last little part down here is the, the vacuum exhaust valve here. Very important that it's sealing off. However, the last thing that's going to check and, and stop air from coming in, air or water coming into the chamber, is the adductor check valve. So we've, we've pointed that out in the internal components video. But this adductor check valve right here, it's right, right below the adductor. But if it's not stopping the flow when the vacuum's formed in the chamber, it would allow water, air, steam to come back into the chamber and you wouldn't pass vacuum leak tests. Over here, the steam trap also has a check valve, so the steam trap check valve. If it wasn't sealing off, if it was plugged open, it could let water in from the water tank through this into the chamber and you wouldn't pass vacuum leak tests. So if we kind of zoom out, so that's kind of an example of how to use the process flow diagram. You could use it to troubleshoot some other things. If you weren't getting steam to the chamber, you could kind of figure out where does the steam come from, why is it not getting there. If maybe your liquid level switch wasn't working, you can kind of see where it's attached. Um, so that's how to use the process flow diagram.